logics because I saw Mike looking at me when Brandon That's raised right. that question, yeah, okay? Right. And then you can think about the other three. Yeah. All right? Uh, so I think your question was uh, what has to happen to change what, to change what Brandon referred to as an institutional logic. Uh, fancy sociology word for kind of the collection of taken for granted practices and also cognitive assumptions, attitudes, beliefs, routine ways of doing things uh, that, uh, in a sense, are structured in a particular environment, uh, whether it's a particular industry, uh, in the church, in government, whatever it might be, so deeply embedded, so structured that a lot of the people in it don't even see it. It's, it's the water that the fish swim in, in that sense, okay? And so what, uh, I won't say it's the only way these things can change, but one way they change is when there is a crisis which actually gets people to pay attention to and ask, what's been going on here? What are we doing? How do we get into this position? Okay, That's one way. It also can happen because there are simply a few people who actively want to do something different, uh, change that institutional order, and uh, over time slowly recruit others into that effort, presenting to people an alternative way of thinking, an alternative way of doing things. But in either of those cases, crisis resolution or response to crisis or kind of uh, institutional entrepreneurs trying to change something, what makes it work is essentially their access to things like societal power and influence, having the right kind of connections, uh, economic resources, the symbolic power of what they say, what else it connects to, okay? And you can be surprised how this works sometimes. So, for example, in uh, Palermo in Sicily, there has been a small group of uh, business people. It was actually seven or eight people, about 30 years old, who wanted to start a tavern and did not want to, at the time, pay the usual mafia extortion payments that most other business in, businesses in Palermo paid. <coughs> Uh, so in a sense, these seven or eight people were taking on the mafia, and surprisingly, they were successful. They started from nothing, but what they put together was the right network of other supporters, off the radar at first, so nobody got legs broken, uh, other supporters, uh, certain kinds of economic resources from area businesses, some support from government, and so forth, and eventually were able to carve out for themselves and other businesses a kind of pizza, a kind of extortion-free zone within that mafia-influenced economy. On the other hand, there have been big companies operating in corruption and heavy environments that maybe spent three or four hundred million dollars trying to fix things and got nowhere because even though they had a lot of the economic resources, they did not have the sort of uh, symbolic social network uh, sort of influences that would let them uh, actually change people's mindset. So I don't know if I've answered your question enough, Brandon, or if I should let Mike talk about something else for a minute. 